Hey guys, it's Charles of Premium B, and in this tutorial, I wanna show you how to create a portal walkthrough transition. It's like something you might see in a travel video, and it's a little difficult to describe, so let's go ahead and preview the effect. Now the really cool thing about this effect is you can use it in a ton of different ways. You can see an example here where I've tracked the portal to a wall, or you can use it to transition between drone shots, or you can even use it as a title sequence transition. We'll dive into the details of how to create this sequence, and if you guys wanna follow along with some of the files that I'll be using, you can download the project file from the blog post, and a link for that will be in the description. I've included quite a few assets that I made specifically for this tutorial, so those should save you some time. And with that, let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects. First thing, let's obviously create a new composition. And I'm just gonna have this be a 1920 by 1080 comp, around 12 seconds long, let's call this main scene. And go ahead and click OK. Now we're gonna need to start with a shot that's tracking forward, the smoother the better. You're definitely gonna want the camera to be stabilized, so if you have any type of gimbal available to you, I highly recommend using that. If you don't have a gimbal, the next best thing to use would be a drone. Or you could also mount the camera on some DIY dolly tracks and track it forward. Or if you have a vehicle available and it's a smooth enough road, you could just put the camera on front of the car and track forward that way. Now the shot that I'm gonna start out with is this winter footage here walking down the road. And I had this on a gimbal, you can see just kind of at walking speed. And I'm just gonna add this to my composition. Now for the second shot, I find the effect tends to work better if you use a scene that's a little more open than the first just so any parallax issues aren't as obvious. My second shot's gonna be this drone footage here in the mountains, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's jump back over to our main scene. And the first thing we need to do is actually track this shot with the camera tracker. So I'm gonna come up here to window. We're gonna come down to tracker. And that'll open up the tracker panel. It may open up in a little bit different position for you guys, depending on your After Effects setup. And I'm gonna select my footage and let's come over here and select track camera. And that's gonna go ahead and analyze our footage. And we'll just go ahead and speed this up when this finishes. All right, looking like this is finishing up. And it solved the camera. We can see the tracking points here. If I go ahead and scroll through on the footage. Now, before we create a camera, what I like to do is just kind of hover here. I'm gonna find these points right here in the middle, kind of a flat area. And I'm gonna right click. And I'm gonna select set ground plane and origin. And that'll just zero that out. So that's kind of the zero point whenever we add any new 3D objects into our scene. And on those same points here, I'm gonna right click and let's go ahead and create a solid and a camera. So now we can see that solid there. And if we go ahead and track forward here, we'll see it's tracking correctly to the ground. And that's a nice starting point. Now we need to add in our reveal shape. So basically that scribble animation that I've created. So if we come over here to the project in the project file under assets, I've got this scribble footage. And if I go ahead and turn off the alpha channel there, we can see how this scribbles on, and that's gonna basically be our mat for our second clip. Now, if you guys have another layer you wanna use, definitely feel free. And also, if you're curious how I created this, just in Photoshop, I used one of the charcoal brushes here and just kinda of painted in this design. Then I brought that inside of After Effects. You can see how I created this. I just used a stroke animation. You can see I created this mask, and I applied a layer on top of that, which is a stroke animation. If I go ahead and scroll through this, you can see how that kind of animates on. And I just matted the original scribble to this new animation to kind of create that reveal myself. And then I rendered that out to create the actual animation clip. Again, if you want to skip all that, don't worry about it again, because we have a pre-rendered scribble footage here with the project file. So you can just go ahead and use this if you want, make it a lot easier. So let's come back over to our main scene and let's drag and drop in that scribble footage. Now let's go ahead and move forward a little bit on the timeline and let's go ahead and make this a 3D layer. And when we do that, it's gonna rotate our footage and move it around and yours may be in a different position than this, but you can see the corner of it starting right there at that ground plane and origin we set. So what we need to do is just move this around in 3D space. You can see we have the handles here and I'm just gonna pull this up and rotate it. And we can just eyeball this if you want to. It's usually gonna be good enough, but I'll show you guys a couple other things we can do as well. So let's just go ahead and see how this plays. And we wanna go right through the middle of it. So I'm gonna move this around a little bit more. So 
So that looks pretty good for how that kind of writes on. And that's kind of the look I'm going for. If you want to adjust the scale of it, just hit S on the keyboard and you can resize this, make it bigger. And you can start to see with our solid on the ground there, if we move this maybe back a little bit more. If we scale it up too big, we'll see it'll start to clip there. So you can kind of get an idea of where the ground is. So we don't want it clipping through the ground. We're gonna turn that solid layer off after this, but just kind of give you an idea how big the shape actually is. And that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna move this back a little bit more because I kind of want this to go about seven seconds or so before we completely switch over to the next shot. But you'll see when it goes completely black, that's when we'll be basically transitioning to the second shot. So I think that looks pretty good and this is gonna work for us. Again, if you're tracking something like a wall, it may be a lot easier for you to get this into position. In this case, where I'm dealing with this open road, I wanted to use something that didn't have a wall or something flat so you can kind of see how you can move this into position and kind of eyeball it to see what's gonna look correct for your shot. So let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of that solid layer. We can leave that in there just in case we need to reference it back later. And let's go ahead and bring in our second shot. So my drone footage, I'm gonna place it directly below the scribble footage layer. So now we're gonna get something like this. So what we need to do with this is on that drone footage, our second shot, I'm gonna come over here to track mat, and I'm gonna set this to be alpha mat. So you can see it's gonna mat to that scribble effect because it's on an alpha channel. And now we can kind of see how that writes on and we're tracking forward. And we go through to the other shot. Now eventually we're gonna clip actually all the way through that scribble effect and it's gonna revert back because we actually pass through it. So what we need to do is when this goes completely black like this right here somewhere in this area, but before it goes all the way through, we need to select our second shot and I'm gonna hold Control Shift D, Command Shift D if you're on a Mac. And you're gonna see it's gonna split my clip right at that point and it's gonna move that second copy to the top. So if I just zoom out here all the way, we can see now we go from our alpha mat clip and then it's just gonna seamlessly switch over to that other top copy. So it doesn't matter if we go through that scribble effect anymore, it's gonna stay on this second shot. You'll just wanna make sure these little kind of artifacts from the charcoal effect there on the scribble are all the way off screen before you make that switch. And because this shot's moving forward, it kind of tracks seamlessly with this original shot. And if we want, we can also move around the scribble footage. If maybe it's a little bit off center, I can move this over. That's perfectly fine. We have that ability to do that as well. Now we can stop here if you want, if you just want this type of effect, depending on the two shots you're blending together. But something else we can do is add some of those subtle light rays coming through the edge. It looks really cool when it scribbles on. And in order for us to do that, we're gonna need to pre-compose all of our elements right here, except for our bottom footage. So I'm gonna select my top footage here, just hold shift and select all the way down here to the camera tracker. And let's go to layer and then pre-compose. And we'll just call this pre-comp and make sure it's on move all attributes into a new composition, click okay. Now we can still track through here. Everything still should look the same again because that camera is inside of that pre-composition so it's gonna track with everything correctly. Now what we need to do is actually duplicate this two more times. So we need three copies of the pre-comp. So I'm gonna hold control D and hit that twice, command D if you're on a Mac. Now you can see I've got three different copies. And on this middle copy, I'm just gonna hit enter and I'm gonna name that light rays. And on the top copy, I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna name that matte. Because there's a couple things we need to do here for this to look correct. So first off, let's go ahead and solo the light rays composition here. And with that comp selected, I'm gonna come over here to effect and under blur, we're gonna apply CC radial fast blur. And then on the amount of the blur, let's go ahead and crank this up to 80. And if you need to reposition the center of it, you can do that as well. You can see how it's gonna kind of affect the light rays around the edges. And this gives us a nice light ray effect and you can tweak the amount depending on your shots. Now, obviously the edges here, the light rays look quite nice, but the middle of our footage is very blurred out. And so we need to actually create a mat here so that our center part of our footage here is gonna be clear and we're just kind of getting that light ray effect around the edges. So now let's go ahead and unsolo that and solo this top copy, the matte copy. And with that layer selected, let's come up here to effect, come down here to matte, we're gonna select matte choker. And the idea here is we're gonna choke out the edges of this animation, and then we're gonna do an inverted matte for this on the light rays. It sounds a little technical, but it'll make a lot more sense once we kind of get this dialed in. So I'm just gonna use the same settings I did before. So on this geometric softness, I'm gonna set this to be 35. 
And you can see how that kind of chokes in there around the edges. Now on the choke, I'm gonna set this to be 126. So that goes in even further, but we wanna kind of feather this. So on the gray level softness, I'm gonna set this to be 28%. You can see we get some of that back. So if we go ahead and unsolo this now, you're gonna see the center of our footage is clear and we kind of have these light rays around the edges, but some of the light rays are gonna be getting blocked here by this footage and there's just gonna be some issues with just leaving it as is. So what we need to do is on the light rays, go ahead and select that. And for track matte, we need to select alpha inverted matte. And when we do that, if we actually solo it, you should get this kind of outline shape. So you can see how we're just getting the light rays. And it's not gonna be affecting the center footage that's on the bottom down here. So now you can see the result we're getting with that. However, the light rays still don't really look organic right now because we're kind of getting this other colors like these greens here that light really wouldn't work that way with those. So the simple fix for this is just on that light rays composition, go ahead and set this to a screen blending mode. And you can see it's really gonna accent the brighter parts of that and it's not gonna affect the darker parts of the footage. Now as is, it's kind of a little bit extreme. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard on the light rays composition and we can lower the opacity on this. I usually set this probably somewhere around 30 to 50%. Again, cause it can be kind of overpowering if it's all the way up at 100%. We get some nice kind of subtle light rays here. And if I go ahead and back to the beginning, you see how this kind of scribbles on. And those light rays look quite nice, just giving a little extra subtle effect. Depending on what footage you're using this on will definitely depend on what opacity you're gonna go with because depending on how bright and dark your scenes are. Finally, I wanna smooth out a few things on our animation. So let's go ahead and jump inside of our pre-comp here. And I actually forgot to do this earlier. We have the scribble footage, which is a 3D layer. Go ahead and turn on motion blur for that layer. And if we go ahead and when we get close to the camera here, if I go ahead and turn on motion blur for the composition, you can see it makes a slight difference there. And that will definitely help to smooth things out. Conversely, let's jump back over to the main composition. We can also apply some pixel motion blur to smooth out how this gets painted on. This is totally optional, but I really like the look that this gives the scribble animation. So I'm gonna right click here and do a new adjustment layer. And we wanna move this to the very top of everything. And on that adjustment layer, let's go ahead and go to effect. And then come down here to time, which is just off the screen here and select pixel motion blur. And I'm gonna increase the samples for this to be 12. And if I zoom in here, you're gonna see what this does. It's gonna just create a little bit of artifacting and blurring and really smearing here when this paints on because it's trying to interpolate how this gets painted on. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and off. You can see the difference that it does right there at the edge of kind of the paint scribble layer. If I go ahead and scroll through this frame by frame, you can see how it just kind of smudges things around a little bit. It can just give it a little bit of extra smoothness when it is animating on. Now we can go ahead and preview the final result of this. Definitely make sure you guys download the project file. I'm gonna include this wall scene here if you wanna break that down even further and kind of dive in and see how it was created. It's just kind of an alternate look by having this be on a wall. And I'll also include a composition that has some text as an example to transition through. And with the text, it's definitely more of a transition because you really can't tell it's tracking with the second shot until you get all the way through it. But I'll just have this included so you can kind of break down how using text would differ from that scribble animation. I'm also gonna have a few other things in there like some textures I created if you wanna accent it with those as well. All right guys, hopefully you find some creative uses for this technique. And if you enjoyed the tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys on the next one.